hey, follow me on Instagram, yes, King Oliver, and make sure you follow and subscribe so you get a notification when I've released a new episode. You have a great day. So I was watching this program today, right? And um, this Indian lady was making a curry and she was saying how the nigella seeds are a thing that Indians have put in their curries for years and years and years. And rather than having things like garlic and onion, she said, it has some kind of fusing system where when it cooked in oil, it releases a certain oil or gas, which gives it that flavor, which normally you'd say garlic gives instead. And then it makes you realize there's so many alternatives for things that we think we need, for example, milk. We can just have so many other things instead of milk and you wouldn't even particularly realize like if you had a cup of tea and somebody gave you cashew milk, you would probably notice. But somebody made um, a shepherd's pie or a a main meal or cauliflower cheese, you probably wouldn't notice whether they put oat milk in or not. And then it's funny because you think about what these seeds are or what turmeric is. It's just a root in the ground. So when you dig up a tree, you have the root. It's basically that. Right. And we're eating it. And it's just funny how there's so many other alternatives that we can eat. And yes, it. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, totally. Um, totally. And I think milk's especially interesting because I think there's a, I think there's like a cultural attachment to milk. So I think it's less about the fact that it's milk, but because people are so attached to this idea of what milk is, like there's a like emotional attachment to like milk, at least there is in America, um, <laughs> that like these alternative milks have a stigma because it's not milk and milk is this like special thing, um, even though it's just really just another thing that we consume and nothing special. Yeah, cow's milk, again, it's like, going back to years and years and years when people had farms and there wasn't billions of humans everyone was just like living in local villages they'd have a few cattle and it, it's like what food is it's not just filling up your stomach it's an emotional connection it's okay so this was when I last had a meal with my family or when I grew up I had this so milk we have it from birth connects us to our parents and family and motherhood and nurture so it's not just milk in a bowl of cereal there's a reason why we have milk because it brings us back to see our parents giving us milk before bed for example um but actually milk is really bad i get spots when i have milk and i've had spots my whole life and i realized at 27 it was milk that was giving me spots so it's because it's, it's the amount of protein that's in it and again we are essentially putting another protein of an animal in another living species body it's got its own milk like my milk comes to my human mum that cow gets its milk from his cow mum So why would you have milk from another animal? It doesn't make sense. Like the enzymes, the cells, what it does, it's obviously going to be different. It's like horse tranquilizer. A horse can can deal with that. But you give it to a a human or or a sheep or something or, I don't know, a chicken, it's going to be too powerful for it. And the horse tranquilizer or what's given to a horse is called ketamine and humans take ketamine and the reason why they have that effect on them is because it's such a powerful thing and it's like well that's for a horse not for a human why are we giving a human milk when that's for a cow which is what five times bigger than us you know i mean no wonder i got spots right and their dna is different too it's it's a totally different makeup i mean a lot of people who are lactose intolerant when they have milk that are uh, from animals that are like a bit closer closer um, in our like DNA, like, you know, sheep's milk or um, like goat's cheese, it's a little bit easier for them to digest because it's a little bit closer to their DNA, which I think is fascinating. It's like, we're so far, I don't know. It's like, why, why would we choose cows and stick with the cows when we're so, it, it's just tradition. That's really what it is. It's just tradition because it's what we've always done. And that's one of the things that have stuck um, instead of it, it evolving with us like technology and the way we live and fashion or whatever else milk just from a cow has stuck with our with our humans and uh, it's really hard for people to give that up so why do you think that people for example there's a brand called cow and gate which is basically powder which you add water in which makes which a a baby has obviously it's not milk it's just man-made fact crap basically but why do you think that people see an advert on tv and see this special powder for your baby and give that to the child rather than let the baby suck on the tit of its own mother why well some women can't this goes into a whole nother topic around um 
you know, like a woman's ability to breastfeed for an extended period of time. Some women are lucky and they're able to do it longer, but some women, they dry up quicker. Some women, it might cause irritation or they might just not have the time if they're like working. And so they might not have the ability to, because it doesn't just, it keeps going when you keep latching the baby. And so unless you're continuously latching the baby, it's easier for the, the breast to dry up. And so they can't, like some people just can't um, naturally breastfeed or if they're on medications that they need to live on to survive, like, you know, that might harm the baby, they have to use alternative formula as well. So that's a whole another thing. <laughs> Not everyone can. <laughs> so, oh, uh, so every female can produce milk, but just for a different level of time. So some will, some will dry up quicker than others, right? Is that what you're saying? Everyone can, yeah, but just the length of time. <laughs> I'm not a professional on this by any means, but, um, yeah, I, I'm not even 100% sure that all women can. You know, I, I think it's rare if someone can't, but I don't know if all women can. And some women, like, it, the ducks just, like, don't um, produce milk as as nicely or as much as they need. Like, sometimes their their breasts are producing, but it's not enough to actually fill the bottle for what the baby needs at that time. So they have to supplement. You know what I mean? So it it's kind of varies person to person. So every human being is different from the past human being or from the human being next to them different evolution so chinese person their dna has been around for longer than say an english person or a jamaican in the jungle everyone's got many more ancestors depending on how long they've been around for wouldn't you say that if a woman compared to that woman over there can't breast can't get give breast milk for say a, a period of time versus the other person you can do it for longer maybe that child doesn't need breast milk right if it's all about everyone's dna and evolution is different why does now that child need breast milk based on his own genes and his own cells because everyone else stops having milk at say one years old maybe in his generation and his ancestors and his cells and how he's created from his mother and her mother maybe they don't need that much milk at that time so why would we need to then give more because a baby's supposed to have it until say one or two years old like everyone's different like your ancestors are different to mine you might be able to tolerate certain foods compared to me because in america they might have always had grains and shit like that and in england grains came around say 50 years ago so now your body and your mother and her mother this body can tolerate grains more so, you know, like Chinese and soybean, they've had it for years. But English person suddenly has a soybean, they've got a soy allergy. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, sometimes women's ducks dry up before the baby's even four months. And the baby can't eat anything other than, you know, it doesn't have teeth or like the digestive enzymes to digest anything other than milk. And that's when formula is created. So I, I, I think it's less about, um, you know, like getting to an age where they're able to eat something else. And it's more about, um, you know, just genetically, some people are just not able to, you know, oh, and also environmentally. And also um, it, it just looking at, like, I think it's kind of a luxury to be able to, it's a privilege to be able to have the nutrients necessary to be able to, to produce breast milk. You know, not everyone has that ability. Um, or the resources or the time to do that. So, you know, I think there's a lot of things that are playing it against women and, and, and mothers and um, that are making it difficult for mothers to actually like, you know, properly take care of their kid. And then there's so much pressure around what women should be doing to take care of their kids and what ways and, and what's right and what's wrong. And it's like, no woman can do anything right when it comes to raising their own child. The whole world has an input. <laughs> yeah, what, what I find is that... Um... When something is reserved, say like 40 years ago being gay, no one said anything, right? And now all of a sudden it's okay to be gay and now everyone comes out. Mental health issues, no one says anything, now everyone comes out. At some point I think that it's going to be the same for breastfeeding. Now if a woman's breastfeeding in a restaurant, they can't believe what she's doing. Like, oh my god, why is she doing that? That like gay and um, vegan movement and whatever is going to become a norm at some point. Everything becomes a norm which isn't popular at some point dreadlocks white guys having dreadlocks multicolored hair things that the scene as oh my god you should be doing that will eventually become just accepted as the norm so breastfeeding in public is the next stage because again you rarely see it and eventually that will become the norm it has to and so so it should 
I hope so. You know, like <laughs> I think it's it's crazy that women can't breastfeed. That that's like it's, it's fucking absurd. It is absurd. <laughs> it's really absurd. Like the, get over it. <laughs> the only <laughs> living, process. the only living species on the planet that can't or is ashamed to feed its offspring. Right. Exactly. Like, uh, absolutely <laughs> crazy. <clears throat> Like 50,000, probably more human beings on the planet, uh, sorry, species of on the planet, cows, sheep, goats, giraffes, kangaroos, but a human being can't, it's stupid. It's, it's pretty incredible that we think that we're not just above other species in that way, but that that natural process is disgusting and that we we are above that and we shouldn't be doing that, even though we should be doing it. You know what I mean? Like people are like, you should be breastfeeding, but don't do it in public. You should be doing this, but don't do it this way. Like there's just so many restrictions and judgments on like the way people should be living that it's the point where really everyone just like minded their own damn business <laughs> would would we have as much drama as we do like does it really matter how somebody lives their life if they're not negatively affecting other people again it all comes down to everyone's following a follower and when the pattern changes they're looking to like their leader of should we be doing this like I, i'm not fitting in anymore so we look there should we be doing that like should she be doing that and if they say no or the leader who's been following a group of followers who don't think that's okay says no then they look at that person in shame for a guy if they were to see that they'd be like oh my god a boob so you take them away which means the stigma is with females so what the fuck it's like that's your own like you should be you thought it should be one group. Like, why would a female have more stigma over that than a guy when they're all part of the same sex? Like, that's you. Like, that's going to be you. Your mother did it to you. So why would you have that attitude towards it? And the answer is, is people want to fit in and they're scared of stigma. They're scared of being judged and they don't want to be the first person to make the move. So unless it's common to do it, the opposite is shun. Why are you doing that? That's wrong. And it's only wrong because not enough people do it. Eventually, when everyone starts to do it, people will be getting their tits out for fun. You know, they'll have a fake doll just like just for the sake of it, because everyone else around the table is doing it. And the waiter will come over like, can I get your order number? And she'll just see four real babies and just some fake doll. And she wants to get her tit out because everyone else has because she doesn't feel she doesn't fit in. And then eventually it's like, madam, you can't do that. And it's like, well, why can't I do that? They're all doing it. And then that's another thing, because it's like, well, yes, you're right. But technically, you're just getting your tit out, which is illegal. Decent exposure. <laughs> but but they are too, but it's feeding a child. So again, it's very tricky if that was to happen. It's like <laughs> transgender toilets. Male, female, do you have one for both? Or can I just use the disabled toilet? Then the disabled people are like, well, that's my toilet. And I'm like, I've seen one disabled person come into this restaurant in two months. So why can't they use that toilet? Why would you build another toilet? which takes up the space of chairs and tables in a restaurant, which means lots of money for the business, because in case you want to come in and have a wee in your wheelchair once every two months. So again, it's very tricky. But everyone happy, no one's unhappy, and everyone's, you know... <laughs> Making things every accessible. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going back to why women judge women for doing things. It's really because for so long, women have been suppressed and judged and you know um told what to do for so long that they've created that sense of like disempowerment empowerment through telling people what to do hence why there are karens <laughs> i don't know if you've heard the term karens <laughs> yeah. um but that, that's because for so long and beaten still women are disempowered and it's through control that they regain some sort of power some sort of claim to power and because they are in the hierarchy of like privilege you know white women are higher up but we're still you know white women are still below white men and so they're still like in society some shit on her women you know not getting paid as much getting you know sexually harassed name all the things and so there's this sense of uh, disempowerment that happens in conditioning when we evolve and grow up. Then these Karens and these women that judge other women, they're just displacing their own dis disempowerment on other women and on other people who are less privileged than them to reclaim some sort of power, you know, to like feel some sort of like false illusion of power through control. It's so true. I see, <clears throat> I see that a lot. Giving somebody somebody who feels this sense of power who shouldn't feel that at all and they feel something that you've never felt before that form of control and power and it could be anything it could be just getting your own way in a restaurant it could be the bus waiting for you longer than they should have and once you get that power you've reached this feeling you're not really supposed to feel right and then when they don't get their own way next time 
they go up a level of control and then they become crazy. Not, I mean, anyone, male, or female. And that's why people who have power who shouldn't have it, it is dangerous because they, they shouldn't be there. And the only way they can keep it is if they reinforce control, which is the problem. Somebody who has that control should have never had that control. And once you get a glimpse of that power, it is hard to, to, to not have it because you should never have had it. And I see it everywhere. People who get their own. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Remember to subscribe and follow. So when I release a new one, you get a notification and follow me on Instagram. Yes, King Oliver. Ciao, amigos.